Hello everyone, I am Dr. Trupti and you are watching my YouTube channel Enjoy Biochemistry. In today's video, let's learn about heme synthesis. At the end of this session, students shall be able to describe heme synthesis in detail along with its regulation. What is heme? Heme is an iron containing porphyrin which means that heme is the derivative of porphyrin and porphyrin is the derivative of porphyrinogen. So let's see the difference between porphyrinogen and porphyrin. So these porphyrinogens they are the intermediates in the biosynthesis of porphyrins. For example, uroporphyrinogen, coproporphyrinogen, protoporphyrinogen. So these are various porphyrinogens. These are the cyclic compounds which are formed by fusion of four pyrrol rings and these four pyrrol rings they are linked by methylene bridges. So the four pyrrol rings they are linked by methylene bridges and these porphyrinogens are colorless. So this is the structure of protoporphyrinogen 9 here you can see there are four pyrrol rings 1, 2, 3 and 4 and they are linked by this methylene bridges. So this is protoporphyrinogen 9. Now porphyrins. Porphyrins are also cyclic compounds and derivative of porphyrinogen and they are formed by fusion of four pyrrol rings but they are linked by methanyl bridges and these are deeply colored. This is the structure of protoporphyrin 9. Here you can see the four pyrrol rings they are linked by this methanyl bridges. So there are presence of conjugated double bonds be between the pyrrol ring which is responsible for the color of this porphyrins. Here in the structure of porphyrinogen the conjugated double bond between pyrrol rings are not present. However, they are present in the protoporphyrin. So that's why the porphyrins are colored and these porphyrins are formed by dehydrogenation of porphyrinogen. So there are le less six less hydrogen in case of porphyrins as compared to protoporphyrinogen 9. So this is the difference between porphyrinogen and porphyrin. As I have already mentioned porphyrins are deeply colored because of presence of conjugated double bonds in the pyrrol rings and linking methanyl group which gives characteristic absorption and fluorescent spectra to the porphyrins and this is very important for identification of porphyrins in the urine and feces because the porphyrins are excreted in the urine and feces of patients of porphyrias. There is one more term or characteristic of porphyrins that is the sorate band. So what is this sorate band? Sorate band when porphyrins are exposed to light of wavelength 400 nanometer so there is absorption absorbance of light gives orange red fluorescence so in porphyrias cop copper porphyrins uroporphyrins they are excreted in the urine and feces and they are identified and quantified by spectrophotometric method so that is very important for identification of various porphyrias now you know that porphyrins they have four pyrrol rings, pyrrol ring 1, 2, 3 and 4 and they are linked by four methanyl bridges like alpha, beta, gamma and delta and they have eight substitution groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 and Hans Fischer who is the father of porphyrin chemistry he proposed a shorthand model for presentation of porphyrin structure and according to that model each pyrrol ring is represented as a bracket and thus porphyrin is made up of four closed brackets with the eight substitution position. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, 8. So this is the shorthand model that is the Fischer's model uh, for presentation of porphyrin structure. Porphyrins are of two types, type 1 porphyrin and type three porphyrins. So let's first see uroporphyrins 1 and 3. Uroporphyrins were first found in the urine but they are not restricted to urine. This is the structure of uroporphyrin 1. Here you can see the substitution group. This is acetyl group, propionyl group, acetyl, propionyl, acetyl, propionyl, acetyl and propionyl. So arrangement is symmetrical here. A, P, A, P, AP and AP. 
so when the arrangement of substitution group is symmetrical then it is called as type 1 porphyrin so this is the structure of uroporphyrin 1 where at uh, acetate group and propionyl group are attached to this por uh, pyrrole rings so this is uroporphyrin 1 now how it is different from uroporphyrin 3 so what is the difference did you notice any difference here yes there is difference only in the position at 7 and 8 so at the position 7 propionyl group is present and at 8 position acetate is present so now the it is asymmetrical ap 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 and pa so now the substitution group are not symmetrical and that's why they are now uroporphyrin 3 so this is the difference between uroporphyrin 1 and uroporphyrin 3 now coproporphyrin coproporphyrins were first isolated from feces but they are also found in urine now this is the structure of coproporphyrin 1 so here the arrangement of substitution group is symmetrical m p m p m p m p so m stands for methyl group and p stands for propionate so in the coproporphyrins methyl group is present and propionate is present and arrangement is symmetrical mp 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 and mp now in the coproporphyrin 3 the arrangement is asymmetrical that is mp 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 and pm so the difference lies in the 7th and 8th position so this is the difference between coproporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 3 as we know that heme is made up of protoporphyrin plus iron so this is the shorthand representation of protoporphyrin 9 and here the substitution groups are mv mv mp pm so it is the asymmetric distribution and this is protoporphyrin 9 or it is also a protoporphyrin 3 it is type 3 porphyrin and by the action of enzyme ferrochelates the iron is incorporated and it becomes him so this protoporphyrin 9 is a type 3 porphyrin where the iron is incorporated and it becomes him so only this type 3 porphyrins which contain an asymmetric substitution they are physiologically important in humans now again let's take a look at structure of this him so in this structure of him as it is a derivative of porphyrin porphyrin ring is present which contains four pyrrole ring pyrrole 1 2 3 and 4 and this porphyrins they are cyclic compounds by fusion of four pyrrole rings which are linked by methyl bridges and there are four methyl groups at position 1 3 5 and 8 and two vinyl group at position 2 and 4 and two propionate side chain groups are attached so first propionate at position number 6 and second propionate at position number 7 so this is in the structure of him asymmetric distribution is there mv mv mp and pm and iron is in the center of this protoporphyrin and that's why him is also called as ferro protoporphyrin now let's see which are various hemoproteins means proteins which contain him so there are various hemoproteins which are can reversibly bind to oxygen some have enzyme activity and some are the complexes and mobile carriers of electron transport chain so which hemoprotein can reversibly bind to oxygen the examples are hemoglobin myoglobin neuroglobin cytoglobin hemoglobin it is involved in the transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide and it is also a buffer means it acts as a buffer myoglobin it is the oxygen reserve in muscle neuroglobin is oxygen reserve in neurons cytoglobin is oxygen reserve in multiple tissues which are those hemoproteins are having the enzymatic activity and the examples are catalase peroxidase cytochrome p450 monooxygenase nitric oxide synthase cyclooxygenase tryptophan pyrrolase so these are the various hemoproteins having enzymatic activity what is the role of catalase it converts hydrogen peroxide into water peroxidase is responsible for neutralization of harmful effects of peroxides 
साइटोक्रोम पी फोर फिफ्टी इज इन्वॉल्व इन द ड्रग एंड केमिकल डिटॉक्सिफिकेशन एंड स्टेरॉइड मेटाबोलिज्म नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड सिंथेस इज यूजफुल फॉर जनरेशन ऑफ नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड एंड साइक्लो ऑक्सीजनेज इज इंपॉर्टेंट एंजाइम इन्वॉल्व इन द प्रोस्टाग्लैंड सिंथेसिस हिमोप्रोटीन्स आर ऑल्सो द कैरियर्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन एंड कॉम्प्लेक्सेस ऑल्सो विच हैव इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन ऑक्सीडेटिव फॉस्फराइलेशन लाइक साइटोक्रोम सी ऑक्सीडेज साइटोक्रोम सी एंड साइटोक्रोम सी ऑक्सीडो रिडक्टेजेस नाउ लेट्स सी द हीम बायोसिंथेसिस वट इज द साइट फॉर हीम बायोसिंथेसिस हीम बायोसिंथेसिस प्राइमरीली ऑकर्स इन द बोन मैरो दैट इज इरिथ्रॉइड प्रिकर्सर सेल्स एंड एटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ हीम बायोसिंथेसिस ऑकर्स हियर एंड फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑकर्स इन द हिपेटोसाइड्स हीम बायोसिंथेसिस कैन नॉट ऑकर इन द मैच्योर इरिथ्रोसाइड्स बिकॉज दे लैक माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया because the cellular location of heme biosynthesis is mitochondria as well as cytosol there are about 8 reactions in the heme biosynthesis out of those 8 reactions reaction number 1 6 7 and 8 they occur in the mitochondria while the reactions 2 3 4 and 5 they occur in the cytosol coming to the steps of heme biosynthesis there are 8 steps step number 1 occurs in mitochondria In step number one, there is condensation of succinyl CoA and glycine, and it leads to formation of delta amino levulinic acid, which is also called as delta ALA or delta ALA. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme delta amino levulinic acid synthase or ALA synthase, and this reaction requires coenzyme pyridoxal phosphate, which is derived from vitamin B6, that is pyridoxine. this first step which occur in mitochondria it is the committed and rate limiting step of heme biosynthesis and as this step requires pyridoxal phosphate as coenzyme anemia can occur in the pyridoxin deficiency this ala synthase which is the regulatory enzyme of heme biosynthesis it has two isoenzymes ala synthase 1 and ala synthase 2 ala synthase 1 is present in all the tissues and ala synthase 2 is erythroid specific if there is mutation in ala synthase 2 it leads to x linked sideroblastic anemia so this is the first and most important step or regulatory step of heme biosynthesis that is formation of delta amino levulinic acid from succinyl coa and glycine which occurs in mitochondria so in the first step there is formation of delta ala from succinyl coa and glycine in the mitochondria then second step occurs in the cytosol so that's why this delta ala has to be transported in the cytosol once this delta amino levulinic acid is inside the cytosol two delta ala they combine together to form porphobilinogen which is also called as pbg and there is loss of two water molecules this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme ala dehydratase which is zinc containing enzyme and the other name of this enzyme is porphobilinogen synthase because here porphobilinogen is synthesized that's why the enzyme name is porphobilinogen synthase and ala dehydratase because there is loss of water molecule and the lead can inhibit this enzyme ala dehydratase and that's why in the lead poisoning there is increase in the ala and anemia can occur so in the second step there is formation of porphobilinogen The third step of heme synthesis occurs in the cytosol in which four porphobilinogen combine together to form hydroxymethylbilin or HMB which is a linear tetrapyrrole there is a release of four ammonia and this reaction is catalyzed by porphobilinogen deaminase because ammonia is released that's why the name of enzyme is porphobilinogen deaminase as HMB is, uh, is synthesized here the name of enzyme is HMB synthase and the other name is uroporphyrinogen one synthase so uh, this enzyme has three names porphobilinogen deaminase uroporphyrinogen one synthase and hmb synthase now the fourth reaction which also occurs in cytosol and this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase and there is formation of uroporphyrinogen 3 so the enzyme name is uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase Here you can see the structure of uroporphyrinogen 3, which has substitution group like acetyl propionate, acetyl propionate, acetyl propionate, and propionate and acetyl group. So there is asymmetrical distribution, and that's why this is 
यूरोपोरफेरोनोजन थ्री Spontaneously, this hydroxymethyl bilane can also lead to formation of uroporphyrinogen one, where the this distribution is symmetrical, like AP, 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 and AP. So, this uroporphyrinogen, when exposed to light, lead to formation of uroporphyrin one, and this formation of uroporphyrin and coproporphyrin it occurs in the porphyria. So, this is by the spontaneous reaction. Now, the fifth step. In the fifth step, there is this is the decarboxylation reaction. Four carbon dioxide molecules are released, and this is catalyzed by uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. As this is the decarboxylation reaction, and there is formation of coproporphyrinogen three. Now let's take a look at the structure of coproporphyrinogen three. So now here you can see the acetyl group. It is replaced by methyl group. So here. mp 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 and pm the distribution is asymmetrical but the group present are methyl group and propionyl group mp 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 and pm also this uroporphyrinogen 1 which is formed by this hydroxymethyl bilane by the spontaneous reaction it can lead to formation of coproporphyrinogen 1 by the uroporphyrinogen decarboxylation reaction and which further leads to formation of coproporphyrin 1 so this can also occur spontaneously so in the fifth reaction we have seen there is formation of coproporphyrinogen 3 now what will happen if this uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase is defective so if this enzyme is defective there will be no formation of uroporphyrinogen 3 from hydroxymethyl bilane and this occurs in the porphyria that is congenital erythropoietic porphyria so what will happen there will be no formation of uroporphyrinogen 3 so further process won't occur and there is spontaneous formation of uroporphyrinogen 1 from this hmp directly which will lead to formation of uroporphyrin 1 from the uroporphyrinogen 1 coproporphyrinogen 1 is formed by the action of enzyme uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase and there is formation of coproporphyrin 1 both this uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1 they are excreted in the urine and feces of patients of porphyria and that's why in the congenital erythropoietic porphyria there is increased excretion of uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1 in the urine and feces of patients once the coproporphyrinogen 3 is formed in the cytosol it has to be transported for step number 6 in the mitochondria so in the mitochondria coproporphyrinogen is converted to protoporphyrinogen 9 by the action of enzyme coproporphyrinogen oxidase and this enzyme is specific for this coproporphyrinogen 3 and here the propionyl group in the coproporphyrinogen 3 they are converted to vinyl group so at position number 2 and 4 propionate is replaced by vinyl group then in the seventh step protoporphyrinogen 9 is converted to protoporphyrin by the action of enzyme protoporphyrinogen oxidase and in the step number 8 protoporphyrin is converted to heme here the iron gets incorporated in the protoporphyrin by the action of enzyme ferrochelatase or heme synthase lead can inhibit the enzyme heme synthase so these are the various eight steps of heme biosynthesis out of which step number 1 occurs in the mitochondria step number 2 to 5 occur in cytosol and again step number 6 to 8 occur in mitochondria now let's revise all the steps of heme biosynthesis heme biosynthesis occurs partly in the mitochondria and partly in the cytosol and it occurs in the erythropoietic cells of bone marrow and as well as liver so the first step of uh, heme biosynthesis it occurs in mitochondria there is condensation of succinyl coa and glycine to form delta ala by the action of enzyme ala synthase it is the regulatory enzyme of heme biosynthesis now the second reaction occurs in cytosol so delta ala is transported to the cytosol and two molecules of delta ala they condense together to form porphobilinogen which is catalyzed by aldehyde synthase or pbg synthase 
such four uh, porphobilinogen they condense together to form hydroxymethyl bilane by the action of enzyme porphobilinogen deaminase or uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase or hmb synthase now this hydroxymethyl bilane is converted to uroporphyrinogen 3 by the action of enzyme uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase or it can be spontaneously uh, converted to uroporphyrinogen 1 which can be la later lead to formation of uroporphyrin 1 and again this uroporphyrinogen 1 will lead to formation of coproporphyrinogen 1 and then coproporphyrin 1 so this uh, formation of uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1 it is increased in the porphyrias now what happens to this uroporphyrinogen 3 This uroporphyrinogen 3 is converted to coproporphyrinogen 3 by the action of enzyme uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, and the sixth step occurs again in the mitochondria. So coproporphyrinogen 3 is transported in the mitochondria, uh, where the coproporphyrinogen oxidase acts on coproporphyrinogen 3 to form protoporphyrinogen 9. The seventh step is Protoporphyrinogen oxidase acts on protoporphyrinogen 9 to form protoporphyrin, and the last step, that is eighth step, where he uh, in the heme iron is incorporated. So this is catalyzed by enzyme ferrochelitase. So these are the eight important steps of heme biosynthesis. Now coming to the regulation of uh, heme biosynthesis, and uh, we know that allosynthase is the regulatory enzyme of heme biosynthesis. the regulation is different in the liver and the erythroid cells so let first let's first see the regulation in liver so the regulation of heme biosynthesis occurs by the uh, three important mechanism that is repression allosteric inhibition and compartmentalization and we know that allosynthase 1 it is the rate limiting enzyme so all the mechanism they are responsible for the inhibition of this allosynthase 1 so let's see how repression is responsible for regulation so whenever there is increase heme so this increase heme level will inhibit the synthesis of allosynthase 1 how because this heme acts as a co repressor when co repressor binds to the apo repressor there is formation of holo repressor so at the gene level this uh, heme combines with apo repressor and it becomes holo repressor it binds to the dna it leads to decreased transcription of mrna for allosynthase and that's how by repression it regulates the heme biosynthesis now this heme whenever there is increased concentration of heme it leads to formation of hematin so here the ferrous is oxidized to ferric ions and this hematin can allosterically inhibit this allosynthase 1 the third mechanism is whenever there is increased heme it leads to formation of hematin and it inhibits the transport of this allosynthase from cytosol to mitochondria and it has a very uh, short life span so uh, if it is not transported it is rapidly degraded so uh, this uh, increased concentration of heme and hemin it inhibits the transport of allosynthase which is required for the first step of heme biosynthesis in the mitochondria and that's how by these three important mechanisms the heme biosynthesis is regulated in the liver there are certain drugs like steroid hormone metabolites cortisol ethanol barbiturate they induce this allosynthase 1 and they lead to increase formation of heme so that's how the regulation occurs in liver regulation of allosynthase in the bone marrow that is erythroid precursor cells and we know that allosynthase 2 uh, is the erythroid form of allosynthase and it is not induced by drugs that affect allosynthase 1 and there is no feedback inhibition by heme In today's video we have learned about the heme biosynthesis and its regulation the next video will be on porphyria that is heme biosynthesis disorder so thank you for watching and happy learning